Hello everyone, it's Melinda and today we're going to be looking at my collection of Argonite. Um, I'm very, very excited for this one. I took a little bit of a break um, doing videos. Uh, instead, I spent some time uh, acquiring some beautiful new pieces as well as doing a bunch of new research, which I absolutely love. Um, <clears throat> and two of my newest are uh, this one here and this one here, uh, both from Novira Minerals. Um, one of my very, very favorite uh, mineral dealers out of Sudbury, Ontario, my hometown. Um, I believe they also go by Pretty Rocks Cheap on uh, Etsy, uh, which I do like to frequent. <laughs> They're just absolutely amazing. They have really, really nice uh, mineral specimens and... Um, they're very passionate about geology, uh, so, you know, when you bu buy something with a label, you can trust that label, and that's something I really appreciate in a seller. Um, yeah, so I'm so excited to look at these ones up close. I'll start with this one from Marrakesh in Morocco. Oh, this one blows my mind. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's just too cool. It looks like, like mushrooms or marshmallows. <laughs> it's just absolutely amazing. And the energy of, of these large Argonite specimens is just wonderful. Um, I say energy because I'm a bit witchy, but I suppose I mean the sensation uh, you get when you hold it. Like just that, the feeling of its coolness or texture. It's very light and fresh and, I don't know, invigorating. I absolutely love these. Um, and I've been enjoying meditating with them. They're just wonderful. Um, okay, so while we continue to look at this beautiful, miraculous piece of the, the Earth's art, I'm going to get into the details. So, Argonite is a carbonate mineral. <clears throat> Pardon me, carbonate, if that didn't come out clearly. Uh, one of the two most common naturally occurring crystal forms of calcium carbonate. And as you probably already know, the other is calcite. Um, so they, aragonite and calcite are both um, the crystalline forms of calcium carbonate. Too cool. Uh, so aragonite is formed biologically <clears throat> and as well as physical processes, uh, which include precipitation from marine and freshwater environments. Um, however, I'll say that when it is uh, created biologically by a living creature, such as seashells and corals and such, we'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, however, when it is created by a living creature, we uh, tend to discredit it as a mineral, even though it is, uh, you know, chemically the same exact thing. So that is just something to keep in mind as I go through these different items, that some of them um, you know, were created by a living thing and therefore can't be considered technically a mineral. Um, but they're still aragonite. <laughs> so I decided the, to include them in this video. And you know what? I don't know if everyone is aware that our, you know, seashells and pearls and things are made up of aragonite um, and also calcite at times too. Very, very neat. But like I said, we'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, first, I want to show you my next new beauty from Chihuahua, Mexico. Again, Argonite. And look at how different this formation is. Just like a beautiful tree-like crystal, I don't know, beautiful creation. Oh my goodness gracious, I can't get enough of it. Too, too cool. Um, so that's the wonderful thing about Argonite. Sometimes you can see it in like needle-like sprays. It's, it comes in so many different uh, beautiful formations. It's just wonderful to behold uh, the variety of them. Um, yeah, I just absolutely cannot get enough. Um, <laughs> but let's get into it. So the crystal lattice of Argonite differs from that of calcite, resulting in a different crystal shape an orthohombic crystal system with acicular crystals. Um, repeated twinning results in pseudo-hexagonal forms, uh, which we'll see a little bit later. Um, aragonite may be columnar or fibrous, occasionally in branching helictic forms called floss fairy or flowers of iron. 
uh, from their association with the ores at the Corinthian iron mines. Um, <clears throat> this one, I don't know uh, the technical term of what this particular formation could be. Uh, definitely has branching, that is absolutely certain. But wow, and you can see where it was uh, attached to the matrix here at the bottom. So it would have grown. So cool, absolutely fascinating. Too cool. And arganite is the high pressure polymorph of calcium carbonate. Uh, as such, it occurs in high pressure metamorphic rocks, such as those formed at subduction zones. Too cool. All right, now this guy is what most people are probably familiar with. Um, again, very different looking formation, but also argonite. Uh, and these ones are found in Morocco. Uh, and they are affectionately nicknamed Sputnik clusters or Sputnik argonite. How absolutely wicked is that? This was my first argonite specimen. And they do tend to be very, very popular. Um, so, Argonite in Sputnik form exhibits the excellent twinned crystal habit in which the crystals radiate outwards, similar in appearance to the famous Russian satellite Sputnik, hence the nickname. <laughs> um, other nicknames for this, these beautiful specimens are Stellar Beam Argonite, or just um, Stellar Argonite. Um, yeah. They do tend to come up with quite a few interesting, whimsical, metaphysical names for these. Um, but they are Argonite. <laughs> uh, fanciful names aside, they are beautiful Argonite clusters. Um, Alright, so the crystals are typically a bright orange to red color. And like I said, it's probably the most popular argonite specimens found on the market today. Um, and it's often marketed uh, to the metaphysical crowd, very much so, which is why they tend to be, you know, quite popular on the market. Um, I wanted to discuss a little bit, it's not in my notes, but I wanted to talk about my recent uh, <laughs> experience seeing these coming out of their clay. Um, someone was so kind enough to share on a forum what they look like when they are found and they're ac they actually look like clay balls and all you can see are these little shiny faces here of the Argonite and they kind of appear like like flakes of mica in in clay. It's really really cool to watch um, the clay being washed off and you see these beautiful, you know, spraying, I suppose, um, or, you know, just these beautiful crystals jutting out from the center as you wash away that clay. It's amazing. And the other interesting thing to note, uh, and it isn't often mentioned online, is that the red coloring we see um, is due to iron oxides being present in that clay, the clay that it, you know, lives in. <laughs> um, and while it does say that they are often that orangey reddish color, uh, you can see that there are some areas that are just clear and sometimes you'll uh, even see whole clusters that are dark dark red completely attached to another cluster that is uh, utterly clear. Um, and that's due to the different con concentrations of iron uh, in that clay really, really cool. Um, and I had a really hard time re researching that information on the internet. And it wasn't until uh, I was able to connect with someone who actually pulls them out of the, out of the earth that I was able to kind of grasp that uh, concept fully. And I think it's really neat. So I wanted to share it with you. All right. Next up. So as I said earlier, um, seashells are are also composed of argonite as well as sometimes also calcite. Um, but like I said, the, 
the creature itself creates these shells so they are biologically created um, and therefore you know we're not allowed to consider this technically mineral uh, not yet anyways uh, however, since they do consist of Argonite, I thought it would just be, you know, a cool learning opportunity to include them in the video with the rest of the actual mineral Argonite specimens. Because I just find it fascinating. <laughs> so why not, why not add it in? So cool and so pretty. Amazing. All right, and here we have Mother of Pearl, which in this case, and which is often the case, it was um, marketed as abalone. Very popular in jewelry, abalone. <clears throat> so, like I said, Argonite forms naturally in almost all mollusk shells. Uh, which is mother of pearl, so uh, uh, also known as abalone, like I said. Uh, so this specimen here consists of argonite, uh, as well as their pearls. So their pearls are also made up of argonite. Um, uh, also, <laughs> the calcareous endoskeleton of warm and cold water corals. So I have a few interesting corals here from Bali, Indonesia. Really cool. Again, made up of argonite. Too, too neat. Um, so I kind of touched on this, but I'll say it one more time. So in some mollusks, the entire shell is argonite. In others, argonite forms only discrete parts of a bimineralic shell, uh, which would be argonite plus calcite. Um, and this beautiful shiny shell uh, is often referred to as knacker. So I just wanted to point that out because next I will be saying that this nacreous layer of argonite um, also exists on fossil shells of the extinct ammonites. So when you purchase these ammonites and you see that beautiful layer here, this shell layer with the pearlescent look, that is also argonite. And you know what? Sometimes these are marketed as opalized ammonite. That is not the case. There is no opal on this specimen uh, whatsoever. It is literally the natural knacker of this creature, um, which was, uh, you know, consistent of argonite and is still consistent of argonite. It has remained even after fossilization. So there is no opal on here. <laughs> Don't let anyone tell you that. This is all natural and created by this creature that once lived, which is super duper cool on its own. I don't need it to be <laughs> opal. Uh, so here's another one. These ones are marketed as red uh, ammonites. And again, this outer shell here, this outer layer, layer that we see with the red fiery, gorgeous looking um, knacker or mother of pearl or however you want to describe it. Uh, again, it's made up of argonite. Really beautiful and too cool. Too cool. All right. And then there are these beauties, um, which is an iridescent material, very, very popular these days and quite pricey, called amolite. And amolite, this gem material that we see on top here, is also <laughs> composed of argonite. Um, and in actual fact, these are the same thing as these, just large scale, very large scale. Um, and clearly a thicker layer, a thicker layer of that knacker. Um, and even still, it's very fragile, which is why, you know, it's often all cracked up like this. That's quite common of its, of its usual look, even in jewelry. 
Um, and it's also why it is usually stabilized. Because we don't want it to, you know, crumble off the specimen. It would be a tragedy to lose that, <laughs> that beautiful, beautiful Argonite layer. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. There we go. All right, so Argonite is thermodynamically unstable at standard temperature and pressure and tends to alter to calcite on scales of 107 to 108 years. So Argonite can um, alter into calcite. That is a possibility. Um, and Argonite has been su successfully tested for the removal of pollutants like zinc, cobalt, and lead from contaminated wastewaters. That's just a little, you know, interesting tidbit. Sometimes I come across these little pieces of information and I just, you know, they just tickle my fancy. So I like to throw them in there. But yeah, I just thought that was really fascinating that Argonite could uh, help clean up contaminated waters. Too, too cool. Not only is it beautiful, but it is useful. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my collection of Argonite and maybe learned uh, something new. I hope so anyways. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!